Roy Hibbert, he has to go see a psychologist. He's 7'2", he's on the court, he's 7'2". He doesn't score a point, he doesn't grab a rebound, something has happened. Yep. Now I don't know what it is, but Lord, it's bad. Welcome back you guys, and it is not often that we see NBA players go from all-stars to out of the league in just a few years, but that is exactly what happened with Roy Hibbert. Indiana Pacers center Roy Hibbert probably had one of the quickest declines from all-star status I have ever seen in my time watching the NBA. Hibbert went from playing like an all-star mid-season in 2014 to being a player that was borderline unplayable in the playoffs two months later. As always, if you're new, subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with the NBA videos I will be putting up throughout the year. Let's talk about Hibbert's rise as a runner-up for Defensive Player of the Year and his fall as a guy that is no longer useful in the NBA. Let's travel back to the 2011-2012 NBA year, the season where Roy Hibbert's defensive impact would get more attention around the league. He wasn't that impactful of an offensive player. He averaged just 12 points, 8 rebounds on 49% shooting, but he finished 5th in blocks per game and 4th in total blocks. Indiana was ranked the 9th best defensive team in the league. They had a 103.4 defensive rating according to basketballreference.com. He protected the rim at a really high level with good defenders around him like Paul George, George Hill, and David West. Hibbert at 7'2 with a massive wingspan, he was very hard to score over in the paint. He was really slow and looked uncoordinated a lot, but he was effective and became the face of the verticality rule. Hibbert began to gain a reputation for verticality and putting his arms straight up when defending the rim. He was good at avoiding fouls, but he also was getting the benefit of the doubt on a lot of possible fouls. And the media began to post articles about how Hibbert was testing the limits of the rule of verticality. LeBron even commented on Hibbert and the verticality rule when he said this to the media. LeBron said, he takes a lot of teams out of their games. They allow him to use his verticality more than any other player in the league. Hibbert as a player and the Pacers as a team were both doing well that season. Hibbert was selected to his first All-Star game and the Pacers earned the third seed in the East. After beating the Orlando Magic in the first round, they took on the Miami Heat and pushed them to six games. In Game 3, a game Indiana won by 19 points and went up 2-1 in the series, Hibbert scored 19 points, grabbed 18 rebounds, and blocked 4 shots. With Chris Bosh out with an injury, the Heat really just had no one to slow him down. The Pacers went on to lose 3 straight to Miami and they lost the series, but one thing was clear at the time, the Pacers looked like one of the few teams that could possibly challenge the Big 3 in Miami from getting to the finals every year. Fast forward to the 2012-2013 season and Indiana goes from the 10th ranked defense the year before to the number one ranked defense in the NBA. They had a 99.8 defensive rating and once again because of Hibbert, they had one of the best paint defenses in the league. Hibbert did not make an all-star game that year, but he was still doing well at being the last line of defense for Indiana. The Pacers won 49 games, they weren't that great on offense, but if they were going to make it to the conference finals, their defense was going to have to carry them. After beating the Hawks in 6 games in the first round, they had to take on the 54 win Knicks who were ranked 3rd in offense that year. The Pacers won in 6 games and held the Knicks to below 100 points in the final 4 games of that series. And if you had to show one highlight to a new NBA fan of Hibbert's defensive play, this block right here on Carmelo Anthony in Game 6 is the one you show. Roy Hibbert scored 21 points, grabbed 12 rebounds, and blocked 5 shots in that series clinching win, and it set up a playoff rematch with the Miami Heat. We all know Roy Hibbert's offense wasn't great, he was a 12 point per game scorer and was barely a 50% shooter in 2013, but against Miami, he turned into a pretty good offensive player. The Miami Heat did not have any bigs to truly test Hibbert inside, so he had a big series against them. Hibbert averaged well above his averages throughout the whole series. In those 7 games against Miami, he was putting up 22 points, 10 rebounds on 55% shooting. The Heat made Hibbert look like a poor man's Hakeem. And on the other side of the floor, Paul George and the other players on Indiana's defense 
definitely deserve a lot of credit for slowing LeBron down a little bit, but a lot of that had to do with Hibbert's defense and his use of verticality. After the Game 6 win, Hibbert said this to the media when he responded to a question about how he finished 10th in Defensive Player of the Year voting. Y'all, y'all motherfuckers don't watch us play throughout the year, to tell you the truth, all right? So that's fine, you know? The Pacers went on to lose Game 7 by 23, but the Pacers were getting closer and closer to possibly making the finals. They lost in the second round the year before, and now they just took Miami to seven games. The future looked bright for Indiana, and Paul George said this to the media after the game. The great thing is we're a young team and we are past the building stage. This is really our first year tasting success. The rate we are going, we see championships soon. <laughs> Now on to the 2013-2014 season, and Indiana once again was the number one ranked defense in the NBA. The first half of this season was the last time we saw Hibbert consistently play like an NBA All-Star. His defense was great, he got selected to his second All-Star game, and around that time, he was the favorite to win Defensive Player of the Year. But after the All-Star break, things changed. Not only did Hibbert's per game averages drop to numbers I still can't believe, but his defense was not as effective. Check this graphic of Hibbert's numbers before March 11th and then after March 11th. He dropped to 8 points per game and 4 rebounds a night and was shooting below 40% from the field. Even with Hibbert's struggles to close out the year, the Pacers still finished at the top of the Eastern Conference, but the playoffs came and they did not play like a number one seed in the opening round. The first round playoff series against the 8 seed Atlanta Hawks exposed Hibbert's flaws in the worst way in front of every NBA fan watching. If you remember, the Hawks made his rim protection useless by playing 5 players that could shoot threes, which moved him away from the basket. If the big man Hibbert is guarding can shoot threes, he might as well not even be on the court. The minute he takes a step away from the basket, he becomes useless. When Indiana lost Game 1 to the Hawks, at the time it looked like Atlanta could push the series to 6 or 7 games. The Pacers overall defense was still solid, but their offense and team chemistry was terrible. In that Game 1, Hibbert turned the ball over 4 times and had 5 fouls, but it was about to get even worse for him later in the series. In Game 5, Indiana lost by 10 and was 1 game away from being knocked out of the playoffs by the 8 seed, Roy Hibbert finished Game 5 without a point or a rebound for the first time in his playoff career. Hibbert looked useless on the court, he looked slower than usual, and even Kyle Korver, who is not known as a shot blocker, blocked one of Roy's shots. The Pacers were able to close out the series in 7, and in the next round against the Washington Wizards, the Pacers lost Game 1 by 6, and Hibbert had another terrible game in 18 minutes of play. He had zero points, zero rebounds, five fouls, and two turnovers. His terrible production in April carried over into the second round, and he was getting clowned on Twitter. The jokes were nonstop. I remember it so clearly. Tracy McGrady even got at Hibbert and said, Me and Roy Hibbert had the same amount of points and rebounds tonight. After what happened at the end of the regular season, you thought it couldn't possibly get any worse for Hibbert, but it did. Hibbert said this in an interview after Game 1 versus Washington. I'm going to change some things up for the second game. I'm going to look within myself and go out there and figure it out. Pacers fans wanted him benched after that game, and let's look at that graphic again of how bad his play dropped off. Through his first 8 playoff games that year, it somehow got worse than the 8 points and 4 rebounds. He was only putting up 4 points, grabbing 3 rebounds on 35% shooting. But Hibbert was able to quiet the criticism for at least one game. In Game 2 versus Washington, he scored 28 points, grabbed 9 rebounds, and shot 10 of 13 from the field in a 4 point win. Hibbert had a decent game 4 and 5 shooting from the field, and the Pacers were able to close out the Wizards in 6 games. And for the third year in a row, the Miami Heat and the Indiana Pacers would face each other in the playoffs. His numbers in that 2014 series against the Heat just looked like your average Roy Hibbert game. He was only putting up 10 points, grabbing 7 rebounds on 41% shooting. 
In game four, he had another game where he scored zero points and picked up four fouls. If Indiana was going to make it to the finals this time around, Hibbert would need to score at least 20 a night, but that did not happen. The Pacers would win game five and push it to a game six, but they lost by 25 in that final game. Indiana's season fell to Miami for a third straight year. This graphic explains how bad Hibbert was in the playoffs. He had the worst player efficiency rating in the playoffs for a player that was selected to an all-star game. Why Hibbert's basketball impact dropped off so much can be explained in a few reasons. A few weeks before the start of the 2014 playoffs, the NBA dropped a memo to clarify the rule of verticality. The NBA said they were now calling blocking fouls for players that twisted their body in the air. The next reason why Hibbert fell off as a player is that he is just too slow and is not efficient enough on offense to warrant playing time. If he's not defending the rim like Dikembe Mutombo, you might as well just not play him. The NBA is moving away from slow centers, and Hibbert was probably one of the slowest starting centers in the NBA. Guys like Hassan Whiteside, DeAndre Jordan, and Rudy Gobert, who are good at defending the rim, are also useful because they're mobile and quick for centers. Big men need to be mobile enough to help and recover on shots, and Hibbert can't do that. Now you have big men like Porzingis, Anthony Davis, and DeMarcus Cousins who are playing away from the basket and shooting threes. Hibbert can't play away from the basket or finish well inside, so as he gets older and slower, he's just not going to be useful. And also, I think he had confidence issues. He saw sports psychologists a few times throughout his career, and when the Pacers signed Andrew Bynum in 2014, it was reported that signing Bynum bothered Hibbert. Now, this is probably the least important part of the video, but I might as well talk about it. Hibbert did play one more year in Indiana before getting traded. With Paul George out for basically the whole season because of an injury, the Pacers missed the playoffs, and Hibbert was traded in the summer of 2015 to the Lakers for a future second round draft pick. There is nothing interesting to discuss about his time in LA. He averaged just five points and four rebounds on 44% shooting. I guess Kobe slapping Hibbert's arm away when he tried to show him some support was probably my favorite Roy Hibbert highlight on the Lakers. In the summer of 2016, he signed with the Charlotte Hornets and then was traded to the Bucks before the trade deadline in 2017, but Hibbert did not play a game for Milwaukee. The Bucks traded him away a few weeks later to Denver, and Hibbert only played six games for the Nuggets. And that was the last NBA team Hibbert would play for. He did not get signed by any team this past year. Roy has not retired officially, and there's a small chance he could get picked up by a team in the future, but his days as a starter or even a useful bench player are over. And that is it for Roy Hibbert's NBA basketball story so far. This video was interesting to make for me because I remember how much his rim protection bothered other teams. It's just wild how fast his impact dropped off in a few months in 2014. If you're still here, thanks for staying to this part of the video because not everyone makes it to the end. I hope it was interesting to listen to and I'll see you guys in my next one.